The golf sports van Facelift is today in Autogefühl, your number one resource for in-depth car reviews and your number one community to discuss cars today with Thomas. Sports van, it's called, you know, in a lot of European markets, also in Germany, SV, just a short form in the UK market, for example. This 2018 model will come with some changes, exterior and interior. We will explain you all of those and also take you on a full detailed tour exterior and interior and the technical details. Everything for you in full HD, full screen and full length. Let's go. So there is a new color available and it's called cranberry red, exactly the one we have here for you today. Uh, wine red, if you would you know, say so far. And um, well, I wouldn't taste this cranberry, maybe a little bit hard. Then new headlights, as you can see here, a sharper design. It starts with halogen and also those have been reworked. This one here, however, the optional LED lights and always with a LED daytime running light, you can see it here. And special function, there are even three additional LED elements inside the main headlight unit. So pretty, pretty you know, beautiful glass work, you could call it so far. It also leaps right over to the front grille. And the 2D Volkswagen logo is here because the sensor is hidden behind it. For example, also for the front assist, the city emergency brake and the front assist now comes with a pedestrian recognition. So very important safety aspect. And this one here also features now to, together with the ACC, the adaptive cruise control, the traffic assist that you can really, you know, at very low speeds, leave the steering wheel and the throttle basically for a semi-autonomous function to the vehicle. So everything that the Golf facelift recently received now, well, not everything, but almost everything also now for the Golf sports van. 4 meters 33 or 14 foot 2 is the total length of the Golf sports van. And you can see it right here because we have a direct light now on the car that we can see the different color nuances of this color because I've checked just on camera myself and it, you know it doesn't do the, 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 the color really you know do, do enough justice because it looks a little bit different you know when you look at it live. I think it looks a little bit brighter on camera. However now the side profile you can see there's a design line on the height of the door handles which is separating in light and shadow or shadow and light depending on your perspective actually but you can see the differences here pretty sharp for sure other than that form follows function with upright windows that you have as much space as possible in the interior the alloys here 16 17 or optional the top 18 inch of course you know you do not need them necessarily 17 inch would also be a good compromise of um, you know price performance and look um, this one here then the the top that is available and right to the rear well you can see there's still some golf in it for sure not only the platform and all the you know the different technology elements also the golf c pillar you can still see here also in the sv version what do you think about the design tell me in the comments the rear now comes with all LED taillights, also in the base models. And it's pretty much, you know, looking like a Golf variant, a Golf Estate. And, well, there isn't, you know, too much difference too. It's a little bit higher, you can see that. You will have more headroom on the inside. We will take a look at that very soon. However, the Golf variant is 20 centimeters longer. How will that play an effect on the trunk and in the interior space in the rear? That is a really interesting question to find out. Overall, it's also a rather seamless design here with the design line, but you know, everything is kept very simple and clean. And I like that when a design is clean. In the lower part, you can see fake exhaust pipes. That is that you can use different engines and always have the same style on the exterior. But you know, when we go to more to EV cars, electric vehicles, then it won't play in effect anyhow anymore. 
So it's always good to know that when we have a golf model or uh, one of the derivatives variant, Sportsman or SV here, you can open it with one hand because there's a hydraulic strut. And there are major changes with the engines. Um, so far you could only get a very limited choice, just a 1.6 TDI and 1.2 TSI. And now there will be a wider span. First of all, in the lower part there will be the three-cylinder petrol engine, the one liter TSI. We've already known that we've driven, for example, also in, in the Tiguan and it will be available with, with 85 horsepower or also with a little bit more. Then with the bigger petrol engine, 1.5 liter TSI Evo, this, you know, the latest petrol engine, also with cylinder on demand technology. You can also see it here with the four cylinders. That will, will save some fuel. And we did a test with a Golf facelift with this very engine and were very satisfied both with performance and also with the consumption. Will be available with 130 or 150 horsepower. Then the diesel so far just a 1.6 liter TDI. That one will remain 115 horsepower. And there will also be a new 2 liter TDI then available. So overall you get the new three cylinder entry petrol engine but in general also more powerful engines now. And you know, if you think about you going with the whole family and everything is packed full with luggage and kids and, <laughs> and more, then you might also want to go for a little bit more power. And we also, you know, uh, had you know the, the, the experience that when you, for example, go for the 1.5 liter TSI, which I would recommend, it is a little bit more expensive in the uh, in the, the purchase price, but consumption-wise, you know, you usually run this one then at lower RPMs. And overall, we had sometimes the effect that the bigger engines consume less than you would go with the smaller engines and really hammer them. If you mainly use it in the city, you will also live very well with the smaller petrol engines, however. Now let's get inside, so the door handles and door closing sound, there we go. Then inside of the doors, this is really all golf quality, you see fabric here, decor elements and on the top of the door this is soft touch here, so a very high processing quality. It's you can really say it's a premium vehicle. Then a lot of space also here for big bottles. So this is really family oriented. Then you get a lot of different fabrics or cloth seats and optional, those ones are the Ergo Active seats, the optional comfort seats. And they have here a combination of Alcantara on the inside and on the outside fabric. So really good combination, sustainable and you see there already look comfortable. However, you will also be satisfied with the basic seats. Those ones here would pay off if you may be going on long-term trips, you know, quite often. Steering wheel also known from the Golf with those black decor elements. Here, you've already seen on the inside of the doors, we have those, well, it's not really carbon fiber style. It's like black with some structure in it. So um, it looks um, really modern for sure. Then let's get inside and well, you sit a little bit higher than in the Golf, um, have a more upright feeling and seating position, and it's not as high as in the Turan, so this will be the, the bigger brother. This one here is the smaller compact size van, and so you can really have the, you know this position in between. If you say, yeah, you know, I'm maybe a Golf customer, but I want to have it a little bit more versatile for the family, still with upright seating position, especially with a lot of room in the in the rear. However, already as a driver, maybe I would go a little bit more behind, 
So you have a very comfortable seating position indeed and you have a good overview to all of the sides because also the windows are you know pretty upright. And this seat has an electric lumbar support. It also has a massage function. Um, however, it doesn't go all the way up to the shoulder. So I could also say, you know, you do not necessarily need this massage function. Then the control to pump it up, y'all. <laughs> is right here then you can put the seat a little bit higher that hasn't changed at all but it all works great then the steam wheel you can even do it with one hand can be adjusted in all the directions you might possibly need so overall very comfortable position modern cockpit and we will check that at one out with the cockpit overview too because the infotainment system has changed so the cockpit overview here everything is really cleanly sorted out especially with this new integrated touch screen the new 9.2 infotainment screen soon more details to that but this one here taken from the golf facelift 2 new biggest one you start with smaller ones too but this one here makes of course the most you know premium atmosphere um, also you know in the other versions you get the soft touch right there again the building pro pro quality is really superb you can only stress that even here this part also soft um, just you know the, the lower part then is uh, is hard pack actually the climate unit is very well to reach so you don't have to you know reach very low as a driver so easy to control this is classic so not everything is done with the touchscreen still have this classic climate control right there the steering wheel has you know a normal size really um, i think in the polo it is we mentioned that recently is maybe a little bit too big for this vehicle class it's perfectly fine and you can also see down here there's also the dsg a dual clutch transmission available um, already combined them with the highest engines you can go for that one optional of course adds more comfort and in the front here we got some more space for example with a usb port and the 12 volt power supply instruments rather classic left side rpm right side speed and in the middle part for example you have driving data for for the range or you can also have some uh, gps information in there for example here just with the compass when the route is not running or for recent calls and stuff the new infotainment unit as i said the top trim here in detail this is a home screen then you can go to the top gps map make it a little bit wider even you see the reaction times responsiveness is really great here also with this proximity sensors that you can see you know um, here like this and then you have the the shortcuts to add in a new destination for example also it is pretty intuitive um, with a gesture control here now too always when you see this small hand it's possible to um, use the well yeah um there it is <laughs> yeah there we go now it's working properly <laughs> and um, for example when i want to change the language you know sometimes um you know we have a lot of german viewers of course but um then sometimes you want to also see the infotainment screen in english and then it's so easy to find everything you don't need to learn the system first everything is basically self-explanatory phone can be connected via bluetooth like this or then go to this um, app connect then you can also plug it in in the lower part and with those smartphone mirroring functions so this is all possible you can also scroll it like this you can also put image of you maybe your dog in there this is also possible so overall i think one of the best infotainment systems as it's for you know intuitive use because it's pretty simple and very crystal clear Glovebox has a standard storage space and can be cooled. I think that's an important function if you want to have some cool beverages or maybe a vegan chocolate bar in there, <laughs> ain't it? So then rather here, this part, um, you have the driving modes here, for example, driving mode button and also for the autom um, half autonomous parking function. Then rather a big space here for the cup holders and you can either use it, you know, like this as a huge space this is the standard car key by the way you can put something right in there and then you can also unfold cup holders like this you press those buttons here and then you have adaptive cup holders so you either have those cup holders or a big uh, storage space and you can also hide them 
there again like this or just used one so I think a very clever solution and then the armrest here you can see always good sign for building quality here is very fixedly attached and then really a lot of space in there so again they paid attention that you have enough room to store your stuff so let's get in the rear compartment easy entry really so much space and I mean if you look at this space sometimes you ask yourself hmm do I really need to pay more money for her to run or is it already enough because even if I would be driving see here's also an additional table for the kids and beverage holder even if I would be driving as a tall driver one meters 86 or six foot one and with a panoramic roof there's still some headroom left there's plenty of knee room left so that's really astonishing so a very good package for this vehicle um, this is really fixedly attached to the to the lower side now let's see how, how can I unleash it usually it's like you know um, a button to press in the lower part to unleash it again yeah so I, I wanted to pay attention but it's really just pushing it down um, I don't you know I didn't want to break something but it's really just you know applying some more pressure uh, but why, why not I mean easy solution so and back to the rest special feature of this vehicle is this rear bench can be actually you see I can even move it a little bit further to the rear overall 18 centimeters to the front and the rear you can see it right there so this way you know I couldn't really sit properly but then there's more room behind me so it moves from 500 to 590 liters then in capacity behind me and if you're you know rather traveling with passengers you can so you're really flexible also the um, back part of your seat like this it's not only to flip the seat you can also adjust the angle so if i would like to sit really upright i could do that but i could also say yeah you know i want to relax a little bit more then i can lean back so i think this is a very good function to serve different needs this by the way this strap here in the front so at, the, at both sides and then this is also the way to flip the seat from here if i want to access something from the trunk maybe and then there's also an armrest with cup holders here in the middle part and you can also just turn this middle seat around and then maybe it serves like a like a ski hatch for example and then well the only thing is i can't put this seat up with one hand here now i first have to pull the, the strap here right again and then you know um, like this and yeah then it's possible so and here again you know this is a disadvantage for those angle functions then you have to press it once more but I really prefer to have this function because sometimes in the rear seats you only have this sleeping position and that's not really comfortable you know for, for longer term run you maybe don't want to like sleep all the time so uh, I think really handy to have that and also from here very good view to the panoramic roof it's an option of course you can still order that as you, uh, as you just saw with tall people in the front both in the rear if you have like four Michael Jordans in here then you probably leave out the panoramic roof of course for the rear passengers it's even the better view to the outside basically so that would be your view and you can also open this panoramic roof it's really huge huge so like this and this is <laughs> well as close as it gets to having a van convertible i think so what about the trunk really crucial for this vehicle you heard me before 500 to 590 liters if you i'm um, sorry it's a golf flipping the vw logo here if you uh, just move the bench forward and backward but you can do so much more with the trunk so let's take a look right here this is a basic setup and you see they're really square dimensions so you can really use all the space you have um, there's a replacement tire and also the DIN audio system beneath that here but you can also put it just a level lower then you have a little bit more space in height however then you have this loading sill usually it's probably more handy than you know have rather this low loading sill so very easy to put things in well the difference to a golf variant is that a variant the estate has more luggage length so this is the basic difference about um, 20 centimeters but then again as you can and I'll just do it right again you can see it from there when you then again move the bench forward like this you can see you can probably make up for this you know uh, 
for this length you do not have available in the sportsman here, you do this trick. And then if I flip it here, and you can see, well, here at the moment there's a gap now, you know, when I have the bench forward. So if you flip the seats, probably better to push them back again. And then, let's see if I can move the head restraints up. So that's almost all flat then. And we can also do it on the other side. And then we have a maximum loading capacity of 1,500 liters. And for this segment, that's really enormous. So right there. And this is really good also when you, for example, want to put a bicycle in there or something like that. The only thing that is missing to me, well, with the at least with the Ergo Active seat here, where you can only, you know, push it a little bit forward. Uh, I'm not exactly sure I would be interested if um, with the basic seat you can maybe even flip it completely because that's also an important function that you can flip this seat here completely. But already with this setup here you are, you know have a lot of flexibility. Of course you can also remove the, the top cover right there. It's also pretty easy. We move it right here and here. You can see you can even do it with one hand. And here we go. And now to the conclusion for today, the Volkswagen Golf sports van facelift. Well, the changes, new headlights, we've seen in both versions, also taillights, then updated engines with a good choice now. Of course, I would like to see alternative drivetrains, but for this segment, not realistic yet. I think it will take some more years for that. The 1.5 liter TSI would definitely be my favorite. Also with the new spectacular infotainment system, if you want to spend the money for that, of course, if you want to go more for a price performance vehicle, then you would start with the smaller infotainment screens. From the interior, the building quality is really great. Um, as we know from the Golf, and I think it's unmatched in this very segment here. And this one here can easily keep up with, you know, with the even more expensive, true premium compact vans, thinking of a Mercedes B-Class or uh, with a BMW Active Tourers and so on. And this one not only easily can catch up, actually, if you ask me, I would rather go for this one because this here, the package, the using of space on the interior is uh, really superb, especially how much space you can have on the rear bench if you can also move it. And this also brings me to, you know, the point, well, the facelift, some more updates, not, you know, super major, but I think the necessary changes you need at the moment and that spices up the product. And I still remember the launch from 2014. You can check out that video later on as well, um, as we were in the south of France with this vehicle. And at that time, I already thought, and I stay with this opinion, that this one is actually probably the best price performance Volkswagen in the whole model lineup. And I mean, it doesn't look that spectacular and you wouldn't say, ah, you know, it's as cool as a Golf R or something like that, or as elegant as the new VW Arteon. But if you look at the price, maybe don't spec it that high as it is right here, go for a low spec variant, just, you know, pick the details you need. And then you see what you get for the vehicle, you know, and for how much different things you can use it then it makes sense and you'll understand that this is actually, uh, you know, when you look at the building quality and still, you know, the price, if you compare it to the premium competitors and then for how much things you can use this vehicle, this is the reason why I think this is actually one of the best Volkswagens overall. So, thank you so much for joining us here today from Car Heaven again, <laughs> as some of you said. It was really funny for sure with this white studio here. Hope you enjoyed this insight. Of course, tune in next time. Thanks.